How to avoid wasting time correcting fools. Fools are everywhere. Correcting them is physically exhausting, breaks your focus, and wastes valuable time and energy. Former President Richard Nixon once commented that Lee Iacocca, the legendary leader of Chrysler, had one major problem, no tolerance for fools. Nixon further explained that this attitude creates two more problems. First, there are so many fools, and second, some people that you think are fools really are not. One of my favorite people is Dexter Yeager, the beloved champion in the Amway business. He is a hero to millions. In his excellent book, Don't Let Anyone Steal Your Dream, he writes, There are three classes of people, losers, leaners, and leaders. I agree and it is vital to discern the difference. Solomon understood the futility of correcting fools. He refused to educate them, motivate them, or associate with them whatsoever. He even avoided conversation with them. Proverbs 26 verse 4 says, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Solomon simply refused to enter into any relationship with fools. He believed that they should not be given any place of authority, position, or honor. Note the following seven characteristics of fools. Can I have your attention for a few seconds? Before we delve deep into today's personal development video, please help us spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ by supporting our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash You will instantly gain access to over 180 Christian videos and over 400 videos about billionaire biographies and over 140 personal development videos and over 450 verse and quotes images among other goodies. If you are watching this video, and you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior I'll help you do that right now, because it is for this very purpose that we create these videos. Giving your life to the Lord is the best decision you can ever make in your entire life on earth. I invite you to make Jesus your Lord today. In Romans 10 verse 9 the Bible says that, If thou confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Please, pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe with all of my heart that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died on the cross and that on the third day God raised him from the dead. I believe that Jesus is the Lord of my life from this day onward. I'm now born again. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well done for making this prayer. You are now born again. Attend a Bible-based church and subscribe to our YouTube channel and support us on Patreon to keep learning the truth of God's word as you become an excellent Christian every day. Our Patreon page is www.patreon.com slash Link is also in the description. Let's continue with our today's personal development topic. 1. Fools perpetuate offenses made against them. They want others to feel their pain. They seek to create an army of protesters against the person who offends them, rather than exhibiting a willingness to settle the offense. They will discuss it in their living room, on the telephone, and with every friend they meet. Ahab, for example, was the king, yet he was envious of the vineyard belonging to another man. He responded by stirring up anger in his wife. She had the man killed, in order to secure the vineyard. God saw their foolishness and reacted with swift judgment. 2. Fools want something they have not earned. Ahab's wife, Queen Jezebel, was also a fool. Her husband's bitter words concerning the man with the vineyard incited murder in her heart. Why? Because Jezebel wanted that which she had not earned. Several years ago a young man on my staff approached me and asked why he had not received a raise. I pulled a sheet of paper from my notebook. Here are the things I have asked you to do numerous times. You still have not completed my previous instructions. Yet, I have paid you a weekly salary every week. How dare you ask me for more money, when you have not yet earned what I've already paid you. He got the point and apologized. 3. Fools ignored the counsel of proven mentors. God always places a wise and experienced person near someone inexperienced. That person represents escape from your present and a golden door to your future. Yet, everyday fools ignore the proven counsel of successful people around them. Consequently, their lives are a parade of failures. 4. Fools refuse to admit their mistakes, even when their pain is the obvious evidence. Making a mistake does not make you a fool. Refusing to admit it reveals you are a fool. 5. Fools refuse to reach for counsel from accessible champions. Recently, I heard a continuous stream of complaints about financial problems. Several around me, it seemed, were upset about their inability to pay bills, and so forth. So, I invested $20,000 and brought in six multimillionaires for a special three-day conference. I called it, the Uncommon Millionaires Conference. Each and every person who had been complaining about their finances, had access to those extraordinary men for three days. It shocked me when those who were complaining the loudest never showed up for the sessions, even though most of them lived less than five minutes from the conference itself. Ignoring available wisdom is proof of a deep-rooted problem. Certainly, it is a characteristic of a fool. 6. Fools confuse their greatest friends with their enemies. In the New Testament, we read that Judas betrayed Christ. Yet, Jesus Christ was the one who loved him more than anyone else. 
children are often influenced by those who offer them drugs, rather than their own parents who have provided them with food, clothing, and shelter. For the young, this is called the burden of immaturity. For those who are older, and should know better, this behavior is called foolish. Who are the proven friends in your life? Never permit the untested acquaintance to stain the loyalty of a proven friend. 7. Fools often betray the ones who believe in them the most. Someone in this world believes in you. Someone helps you and speaks encouraging words to you. Yet thousands do not recognize or appreciate the people in their lives who really care. George Foreman, the famous boxer, is one of my favorite people. He has written an interesting book that I would recommend entitled, By George. Whatever problems my folks had together, it did not affect my father's faith in me. He believed from the time I was an infant that I was going to be a champion. He loved me. He'd never seen my kind of fire in any kid. Like the others, he pushed my buttons to get a rise. Sure enough, I'd go off popping him in the eye. Heavyweight champion of the world he'd shout and raise my arm after I'd tried to beat up someone four times my size. Stronger than Jack Johnson. Hits like Jack Dempsey. George Foreman recognized his father as a force of encouragement. George Foreman is not a fool. Who has invested time in correcting you? Mentoring you? Pouring encouragement into you. Invest yourself in them in return. Protect them as a gift from God in your life. Never waste your energy on fools. How to refuse to tolerate intolerable behavior. Confident people do not need to accept unacceptable behavior from another person. When someone behaves inappropriately or is potentially abusive, your best option is to let her know what you see and stop the bad behavior in its tracks. By doing so you are setting a boundary for yourself that will serve you well. If you don't, when people see that you are willing to let them do or say things that are questionable, you are actually giving them permission to continue doing so. Saying stop, or, if necessary, leaving the room, or asking the other person to, lets him know he has crossed the line, and signals him not to do it again. Discussing the offending behaviors may be necessary, and important if you want to save the relationship, so don't just point to the door. Let people know you are willing to talk about it. Do not let yourself be abused. It will erode your confidence faster than anything else I can think of. Always have a plan B. We all have big changes in our lives that are more or less a second chance. Because many things don't go as well as we would like them to, it's a great idea to have a plan B. Having fallback plans can't help but make you feel better about the outcome of any situation, and it is a common denominator among very self-confident people. Anyone who has had more than one failure in her life can tell you that having another path to take probably saved her bacon a time or two. I'm a big one for contingency plans. If you are an entrepreneur, in the arts or media, or you have all your eggs in one basket, a plan B is essential. Knowing that if you lose the farm you have a condo you can go to makes you feel safer in the world. I know a number of people who have motor homes, and one of the reasons they do is, as they jokingly say, it's their in-case home. During the last big earthquake here in Los Angeles, many people who had them were very grateful, and those of us who didn't were envious. With the world economy in turmoil, creating some kind of additional income stream is also a good idea. The jeweler who is also a great designer or builder, the computer geek who can also teach school, or the PR person who is a closet novelist can all find a way to thrive, even if their current position disappears. Backup plans don't have to be new ideas, I continue to use aspects of everything I've ever done. My days on stage playing guitar have made me a better public speaker, which makes me a good radio host. The energy I put into songs and poems has helped them become columns in books. The years I spent running my own business give me the insight to help others streamline theirs. And all of my experiences have made me a confident and successful therapist. Every talent and ability you have can be built upon and also use again. Not that I'd ever again want to be on a tour bus with six smelly guys for eight weeks, but if I had to I could still put food on the table by humming and strumming. There's another potential upside here. Sometimes your original plan and your backup can work at the same time. I still counsel, consult, write, and speak to groups all over the world. In years when the speaking business got very slow, such as after 9-11s and then the financial crisis, I spent more time writing and counseling. When there was a lull between books, I put more energy into my radio show and business consulting, and did pro bono events. Having multiple options gives you the sense that, if any one thing went away, you'd have other gigs that would more than fill the gap. So get a little creative. Look at your past accomplishments and your current talents. A plan B is only an idea away. By the way, this plan B thing works in life, but not in relationships. Having a backup mate is only going to erode your current relationship and cause heartache for everyone involved. Enough said. Can you please do us a favor? If you have been blessed by this video, please leave a comment, like this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel, and invite at least 200 plus souls, it could be family and friends, to visit Discofeth YouTube channel, so that they may hear the gospel of our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and be born again. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, 
and support us on Patreon. Our Patreon page is www.patreon.com slash Link is also in the description. Thank you and God bless you.